Well, I'm sure most of you were expecting a video of getting wheat planted today. And uh, I'm here to tell you that's not going to fucking happen anymore. Um, so last night we had a rainstorm come through that wasn't even in the forecast. Was not even like they had like a 5% chance. It wasn't shit. And then about 10 o'clock after I left mom and dad started to head home. It started spitting rain and I looked and sure as shit there was a great big massive uh precipitation cell that covered like most of northern indiana and half of southern michigan that just had popped up out of nowhere it was not on the radar like three hours before when i was disking this it was nowhere to be seen and it dropped about i don't know like i say i got my rain gauge out but i talked to a buddy he said they had about two tents I'd say it's probably about right because all the potholes and roads are standing full of water and it, it it's wet. It's between that and a heavy ass dew we had this morning, it's wet. And basically this ground went from, man, probably shouldn't be on it, but you can get away with it to you just can't get on it. It's, it's, it's like mud. It's all sticking together and it's just nasty. Like yesterday, it would crumble. Today, it's it's sticking. It's it's sticking together. It I I can't get on this now. Like today, you can. Yesterday, you couldn't really pack it. Today, you can you can pack it. And I. Uh, and this feels the drier one of the two. The other one was even more marginal than this one was, so I can't imagine what the other one's like. And for a second this morning, I even considered saying, screw it, I'm just gonna drill into it and not worry about a second pass to level it off and see what, and whatever happens, happens. But I, I even talked myself out of that, because I'm like, if I'm gonna do it, I at least wanna do a decent job, and I do not think the drill will do a decent job of covering this. I'll, I'll be able to drill into it I just it wouldn't be able to pull the trench shut and at that point you might as well as not have it drilled at all so this morning while i was standing up here staring at this shit show i did a bunch of reading i read an article from michigan state from purdue and one from ohio state and a little short blurb from some from some place up in canada and basically the general consensus is november planted wheat can work but if you're gonna do it you gotta put down 30 pounds of potash and 20 pounds of nitrogen and that's the same two numbers that every article i said or that i read that's the same two numbers so apparently everybody is in is in cahoots that you're gonna plant wheat in november you gotta have 30 pounds of nitrogen and, or 20 pounds of nitrogen and 30 pounds of potash on so there's and the chances are fleeting but there's still a chance at least now i got it broke open and this field you might have got away with no tilling you might have got away with it the other field you'd have never even no till it because all you'd have done is smeared the sidewalls of the seed trench and never got it closed back shut and you wouldn't have got good seed soil contact and you just you wouldn't have got a decent stand out of it anyway so basically what it sounds like i'm gonna have to do if i do this at all and this is if we get a dry spell we get past the first week of november i'm pulling the plug we're gonna get the weed out of the wagon put it back in the tote bags and call it square but uh if before that first weekend of november we get a spell a dry spell long enough to do this um i'm gonna have to get a spreader lay down some fertilizer i'm probably gonna use the the brilliant drag just because it's lighter and i think it'll do a better job it's we're not heavy on trash so i don't got to worry about it plugging 
but it's not going to be as aggressive as a field cultivator so i think it'll do a better job of just kind of just kind of tickling the soil and knocking the ridges down from the disc and um you know taking care of it and t push that fertilizer into the ground and then drill it but like i say after the first weekend in november i'm pulling the plug we're done trying so we'll have to see what happens as much as i really want to get some wheat planted because i love growing wheat but anyway because of all this and i really wish i'd have known that that rainstorm was coming through because i'd have done this weekend completely different i went down to the muck yesterday started shelling corn got everything opened up down there got as many loads hauled in yesterday as i can because the elevator is only open from noon to six today so I, we're not even going to be able to start shelling corn till noon because everything's so wet and them stalks are going to be tough as hell. And there's no breeze today. The sun's not even out. And this that's going to take forever. I mean, when I say everything around here is soaked, I mean it's soaked. So it's going to be at least noon till we can even think about shelling corn because, like I say, the stalks are going to be too tough. So even if I went down to the muck today, you'd probably only have about four hours of shelling maybe by the time we got everything moved down there and got rolling and then the elevator be closed so there's not even any sense in going down there because you wouldn't even, probably wouldn't even get one field done and yeah so i got one i got a i got a six acre piece of corn right here in town that we're going to get knocked out today so i can at least say i got something done so it's a good thing that i got the tires fixed for this so that we can at least do something productive today because planting wheat ain't gonna happen unfortunately if you can't tell i'm a little frustrated but anyway we're gonna get these bad boys back on there and get her back on all four feet now we just wait for all this moisture to do something productive okay finally dried off enough to do something actually it's been dried off but i haven't been in much of a hurry because i've only got this is about five acres um but before we get going there's a damn fence post in here somewhere marking the corner that I do not want to run the fuck over. Where are you at? The kicker of this whole deal is it's actually not the, there it is. Well, there's A stake. I could have swore they had a damn fence post drove out here. It's one of them little green ones that's shaped like a C. Alright. But now that the sun's came out and there's a breeze kicked up. Teeter, come here. that field is actually drying out fairly quick not quick enough that i would still try to want to get on it today but 
Like, if it wasn't going to rain tomorrow, you could easily get on it tomorrow. Peter, come here. But I am not seeing this fence post, and that concerns me a little bit. Unless they took it out. Should have been right right there roughly they must have pulled it out because i should have found it so i guess i'll just kind of be careful here in this corner or the county took it out mowing there's that possibility too but anyway, we got a 100% chance of freaking rain tomorrow, so it's definitely not going to get planted. But we're going to get this field of corn shelled out. I got the 1800 in the car over here. We're just going to run one truck since it's a small field and there's only the two of us. So anyway, let's get rolling.
really feel I had to leave curl up on. And I don't know why, because this field plays wet to begin with, so it should have been fine. I tell you what, this field's just kind of coming up out of nowhere. Dad already took off with the first truckload. And that was just that front little, I don't know, that front field probably not even a quarter acre anymore, or three quarters of an acre. It might be three, it was an acre, so it's probably about three quarters of an acre now. And then I made two rounds around this and filled the truck. And I just now got it opened up, like just now. So, curious to see just how good this field actually does because so far I was hoping to get two full truckloads off of it which would have been about 150 bushel an acre and then with what's I mean I got basically this whole I got the end rows worked off but I basically got all this whole field left to shell off but should have been I'm thinking about four acres and there's probably there's at least another full truck load out there and probably a partial so but before we get the total I'm actually going to get go home and get on the computer and map this thing real quick just so I can tell you exactly how much is out here because so far it seems like a lot. Good part of a truckload left out there. 
between what I got in the combine, what's in the cart, and damn near gonna fill the truck now. This feels kind of surprising me, to be honest. I know I said that already, but I mean, it's really kind of surprising me. I wasn't expecting that much out of it. Well, I'm glad I brought the cart down here to kind of play with before we actually got to a field we really needed it in because uh, we just smoked the bearing in the bottom of the auger, which ain't no big deal. It's the same bearing as a 525. Well, it's the same auger as a 7300, but the 525 and the 7300 nat all run the same bearing. And we had, because we've had to put bearings in both the 7300 and the 525, we did have a spare one and a spare, because there's a bearing and then a felt that sits on top of it on the auger side to protect it from shit. And we did have a spare bearing and a spare felt, so we should have that fixed yet today. I don't remember using it on anything, because the one went out on the 525, it's been years ago that happened. And then when we got to 7300 we just put one in it because we knew and that thing had it which is the perplexing part is that thing had a bear or we put a bearing in that auger when we built the when we built the cart so it's kind of perplexing that it went out already but such is life That's number three. There's probably just shy of 200 bushel on there, somewhere between 175 and 200, I'd like to think. So, not too bad. But now we got a little custom job to go to do while we're over here.
little field if I could just if I could just farm all the way down there to all the way down there it'd be like probably four acres three and a half four acres probably three and a half I bet that triangle's about two a little over two I don't know it was hard to judge it's hard to judge odd shaped pieces but one of two things is going to happen. I'm hoping I can go over here real quick and catch Jared with his 2166. Get a little bit of video of that running, but I think he's got a semi about full, so I don't know. But if that's going to happen, or if I can't do that, then we're going to run this back over to the next field and call her square for the day. So give me a minute. Okay, so I went in. Well, first off, no, I did not get any video of that 2166 because right as I stepped out of the com, or right when I got done talking to you guys last, he topped a semi off and he took off for the elevator um, because they were just about to close. So did not get any video of him running, unfortunately, which would have been neat. But anyway, uh, I got the combine over to where we're going to shell next, hopefully Tuesday. Um... I started on it today, but the seventh day Adventist, they don't want me working out there on Saturday. We're not in any crunch for time, so not too worried about it. But um, anyway, that field kind of just came out of nowhere and kicked some ass. Um, got 801 bushel off of it when you add everything up, and the grain quality was excellent. It was 50, that was a 56.8 test weight on that load, 56.7 and 56.6 and it was running 16 16 8 16 and that one was down to 16.6 so i had a 16.6 .6, 16.7 and a 16.8 on moisture which surprised the hell out of me was i was not expecting that because i think it was two weekends ago i tested that and it was still up over 20 and we have not had very good drying days so i was not expecting it to be anywhere near that dry i was still expecting it to be like 19 20 somewhere in there but so that was a real pleasant surprise. Um, but anyway, 801 bushel. I went, I got on uh, NRCS Web Soil Survey, made a quick outline map of it. And it's about four and a half acres. And 801 bushel on four and a half acres is... Uh, da -da -da -da. 801 divided by 4.5 comes out to 178 bushel an acre. That's the best field yet, which is not bad considering that field does not have a good track record of growing corn. So Wyckoff kind of coming in clutch on that one. And to top it off today, I, while I was back here checking this field, I found a pony shoe. It's not a horseshoe, too small for a horse. That's all a pony. It's only about the size of your hand. But anyway, um, yeah. So can't complain about that. Just wish it was 40 acres instead of four. So anyway, I guess tomorrow probably going to do a little bit of work on the combine. Man, I wish it wasn't going to rain because I went back here and checked this field. And God, it would probably go now. It had enough time and it had that sun on it all day and we had a nice breeze. It dried out good. But this wasn't meant to happen so we're supposed to get a half inch and you're calling for a half inch of rain to, to between tonight and tomorrow so good times well we'll get something done so anyway i guess that's it for this one we'll catch you guys on the next one.